Hi, this week's weekly roundup, we're seeing noisemakers, more LEDs, no robots, the fastest risk-based Arduino compatible board, and a new SBC that'll raise the bar even further. Kickstarter is a bit slow this week. Must be some holiday period coming up. The caddy board is a simple enough idea. It's a caddy to house a small breadboard, but it also supplies a 5 volt rail. The one bitty is a small ARM Cortex M4 board. It's a fairly plain board that contains a USB DFU bootloader. The Kickstart also has an optional JTAG or SWD module called the Black Magic Probe. Of course, it all relies on open source software, and the creator has included some tutorials and project ideas like a small game console, large LED display control, audio effects, and UAV autopilot. I haven't seen an SBC on Kickstarter for a while. The Firefly team are back with a new board that is setting the SBC bar even further, both on price point and features. The only disappointing thing about it is that it won't be ready till after Christmas. The Firefly RK3399 is a bit of a beast. It contains two Cortex-A72s and four Cortex-A53 64-bit cores, clocked at up to 2 GHz, and also the Mali T860 MP4. For only $139 US, you also get 2 gigs RAM, 16 gigs eMMC, dual PCIe, dual USB 3, dual MIPI CSI and ISP, HDMI 2, DPI 1.2, MIPI DSI, EDP, and a 42-pin GPO header. Runs Android and Ubuntu. Nice. If you're into making a bit of noise, then this guy is creating a synth with features added based on funding goals reached, like choosing between making it open source or a case. Interesting twist. He's had a number of prototypes already, so it looks promising. While Indiegogo has some good stuff. The NaviPack is a small LiDAR navigation module for drones. It has an onboard slam chip capable of sensing anything up to 15 metres away at 4,000 points per second. That means full 360 degree real-time sensing capabilities. Comes with an SDK for either Windows, Linux or Android, which gives you some fairly enhanced features. Yet another 3D printer. This one is based on the Delta design. There's really not a heck of a lot of information on the specs, so caveat emptor. Another noisemaker, this is a tiny keyboard synth the size of a credit card. It contains an Atmega328, providing some basic synth effects. Comes in a DIY kit. Note that this is just in concept stage, so unlikely to be available before Christmas. Crowd supply is unusually active. The AA Duino is an interesting concept. It's an Atmega328P board with an RF and temperature sensor designed to fit into a standard AA battery holder, alongside two other AA batteries. If you're into ECG monitoring, then this pre-launch module provides a nice set of features like low noise, low offset, and low power. Remember the Open 5? It's a RISC SOC designed from the ground up to be open source and open hardware. Contains 16 GPIOs, SD, and JTAG support, running at up to 160 MHz. Not many people would be interested in funding this, but you might be interested in this one. The Hi5 One is a welcome relief to an otherwise ho hum market. It is an Arduino compatible board containing the FE310 SOC, which is an open hardware, open source RISC MCU running at up to 320 MHz. Not only the fastest kit on the block, but free to run them. Runs off either USB or 12V DC jack whilst accepting 3.3 or 5V logic levels. Has 19 GPIOs, SPI, PWM, USB, and a nice feature of 128 megabit off-chip flash storage. Amazon are now enhancing AWS IoT with offline processing for Linux-based devices. This means that your Raspberry Pi AWS device will still work when not connected to any internet service. It does this by using Amazon's Lambda-based AWS Greengrass software. Tindy has a bunch of things. This is a small module that contains an Atmega 329P onboard USB and LiPo charger, but it also has an SX1276 LoRa module, which is capable of 300 kilobits per second. Or the Zero Long, which is the same as this company's Ultra Zero board, but with a long OLED instead. You know it's almost Christmas when a lot of LED displays hit the market. This is a fairly humongous display. If you want to drive 1024 LEDs on a flexible backing, then get this. Or there's the non-flexible Adafruit one coming up. The Wii Thumb was recently successfully funded on Kickstarter, and now it's on Tindy. It is a USB device that provides an ESP8266, 6DOF IMU, and temperature sensor all in a small package. 
Ever lost your UAV? This little device will simply emit a high-pitched audio beep every 20 minutes to help you track down your lost UAV. It starts beeping when power is cut to the device. The Open Home Security Gateway is a board that provides a bunch of useful connectivity options, such as Ethernet, wired and wireless sensor access, RTC, relays and AC monitoring. It's a great little board if you want to build a reliable home automation device. And a few more bits and pieces from the major online shops. Seed have their RF Explorer 3G module on pre-order, which contains an onboard spectrum analyzer, a cheap way to get your hands on some RF test kit. Adafruit have their VL6180 breakout board, which is a more advanced version of the VL53LOX, capable of measuring between 5mm and 1.2m, runs off 3 to 5 volts with onboard logic level converters. Now this is pretty cool. Remember that previous 32x32 32 32 LED display? Adafruit are bundling that, as well as a Pi 3, Matrix Hat and DS1307 RTC for less than $90 US. Note that this display isn't flexible. SparkFun have their MAX 30105 module, which you can use to measure distance, heart rate and particles floating in the air. It's cheap because it uses three LEDs instead of a laser, accessible via ITC. If you're hungry for displays, then DF Robot have a 16x16 16 16 flexible LED display or an 8x8, both using the common WS2812 drivers. On the cheap side of town we have a Maple Leaf clone from Banggood which contains an STM32 Cortex M3 MCU. I purchased one of these through Banggood, so you'll be seeing a review on it shortly. Then there's a board that contains a Cortex M3 and Wi-Fi module. It's essentially an ESP12E and is pin for pin compatible with it. However, this one runs the RTL8710 Wi-Fi module. This is a package that contains an ESP8266 and a bunch of add-ons like relays, LED, pressure sensor and SD storage. Looking for a precision ADC? The ADS1015 breakout contains a 12-bit ADC that can run at about 3000 samples per second over the I2C bus. It contains an internal oscillator to get accurate sampling. Someone lighting candles in the bedroom again? Get your kids to make one of these and teach them that where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Or if your kids just aren't listening to you, check your pulse with this cheap ECG kit. Banggood also have a cheap 1.4 inch TFT display accessible via SPI running the ST7735 chipset. Or if you need a slightly larger display, this 2.2 inch TFT display gives you a slightly higher 320 by 320 pixel resolution. Also has an IR sensor. Or Analog Lamb have a 128 by 64 pixel OLED display. Of course, there's also the ESP32 modules that are starting to flood the market. This one from Banggood, and this one from Shenzhen to you. Crotel have a cheap BME280 sensor, which gives you pressure, humidity, and temperature all in one package. Or IC Station have a cheap I2C based hall sensor module, and a neat four port hub that looks like it is also accessible via I2C. Hmm, interesting. As always, links are in the description below and also on my website. If you got something out of this video, then don't forget to like, and if you follow or subscribe to me, then you'll be updated when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.